Welcome or welcome back Star Wars fans where we dig deep into the galaxy far far away and give you the most comprehensive breakdowns of the Star Wars universe. Today we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating mysteries of the Star Wars universe, the Zepho. These ancient beings are more than just another forgotten civilization in a video game. They may hold the key to the force itself and the future of the galaxy. From their monumental appearances in the Jedi Fallen Order video games, subtle hints in the Bad Batch on Scar and Null, to the secrets buried in the opening scene of Ahsoka, and the temple Grand Admiral Thrawn is holed up in in Peridia. The Zepho are becoming more important than ever. Why is that? Why are we seeing so much of the Zepho lately? What does this ancient species mean for the future of Star Wars and how do they tie into the mysteries of the Force, the Night Sisters, and the quest to find Thrawn on Peridia? Well, buckle up. This is going to be a deep dive. By the end of this video, you'll know more about the Zepho than anyone else. And you'll see why they could be the biggest revelation in Star Wars since the Jedi and the Sith. Make sure to hit that like button subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss a single Star Wars update. All right, let's get started. Before we get into their recent appearances, we need to understand who the Zepho were. The Zepho were an ancient and technologically advanced species who existed thousands of years before the rise of the Jedi or the Sith. They were one of the first civilizations to discover the Force, which they called the Life Wind. Unlike the Jedi who sought balance or the Sith who craved power, the Zepho originally saw the Force as a tool for peace and prosperity. Their society flourished, reaching heights that few civilizations ever did. But as with many great societies, internal strife and the temptation of power led to their downfall. The split in their society occurred when a faction of the Zepho turned to the dark side of the Force. These dark Zepho were drawn to the same powers that corrupted future Sith Lords, using the Force for domination rather than harmony. This internal conflict ultimately drove the Zepho to near extinction, forcing them to flee their homeworld and scatter across the galaxy. This tragic fall from grace mirrors the fate of the Jedi and the Sith. Perhaps the Zepho were the blueprint for future Force users. Their story is a cautionary tale about the dangers of the Force and how easily those with power can be corrupted. But where did they go? The Zepho left behind mysterious tombs, temples, and relics scattered across the galaxy, guarded by sentinels, mechanical warriors programmed to protect their secrets. These sentinels, combined with the puzzle-like architecture of their temples, hint that the Zepho did not want their technology falling into the wrong hands, or their knowledge. The Jedi Fallen Order video game gave us our first in-depth look at the Zepho. The game's protagonist, Cal Kestis, a Jedi Padawan, stumbles upon Zepho ruins during his quest to rebuild the Jedi Order. These ruins are scattered across planets like Bogano, Zepho, and Dathomir, and each site reveals more about the Zepho's legacy. One of the most significant discoveries in the game is the Tomb of Mictrol. The Zepho leader who fell to the dark side, and his tomb is full of traps, puzzles, and sentinels that test both Cal's connection to the Force and his resolve. The tomb of Ilram, another Zepho tomb, reveals more about the Zepho's technological advances, such as their gravity manipulating spheres and their reverence for the Force. What's particularly interesting about these Zepho tombs is how they serve as a warning. The deeper Cal goes, the more he discovers about the dangers of misusing the Force. The Zepho didn't just record their history. They encoded their fears, their regrets, and their warnings into these temples, almost as if they knew that future generations would follow in their footsteps. The Astrium, a sacred Zepho artifact, plays a crucial role in accessing these tombs, hinting that the Zepho may have left behind other yet undiscovered artifacts that could unlock more secrets. And it's not just temples we're talking about. On planets like Bogano, Cal uncovers the Vault, a Zepho structure that holds a holocron, a map containing the locations of Force-sensitive children across the galaxy. 
The Zepho were clearly not only aware of the force, but deeply intertwined with it, suggesting that their knowledge could reshape the galaxy's understanding of the force. The introduction of the Zepho in Jedi Fallen Order seems almost intentional, with Star Wars delving deeper into ancient Force lore. The Zepho may be the key to unlocking the next phase of the Star Wars narrative, especially as we start seeing more ancient Jedi and Sith relics in shows like The Mandalorian and Ahsoka. The second major appearance of Zepho lore comes in the second season of The Bad Batch, when Clone Force 99 arrives on Scar and Null. Fans immediately notice the similarities to Zepho ruins from Jedi Fallen Order. While the show hasn't outright confirmed that Scar and Null is a Zepho world, the architectural design, the ancient traps, and the puzzle-like structures all point to Zepho influence. So what could the Zepho have been doing on Scar and Null? If this was indeed a Zepho outpost, it might have been part of their great migration after their fall. The Zepho were known to flee across the galaxy, seeking refuge from their internal conflicts, and Scar and Null could have been one of those planets they tried to settle on. Scar and Null also contains ancient Force-sensitive artifacts that echo the designs we see in Jedi Fallen Order. This suggests that, much like Bogano, Scar and Null may have been another repository of Zepho knowledge, knowledge that remains hidden beneath the ruins, waiting to be uncovered. Could this be why the Empire is so interested in planets like Scar and Null? Is there something more on these Zepho worlds that could give the Empire or other factions power beyond what we've seen before? If the Zepho once held secrets about the Force that even the Jedi or Sith didn't fully understand, the race to uncover these ancient mysteries could be what drives the next era of Star Wars storytelling. One of the most exciting developments in Ahsoka is the map Ahsoka retrieves in the opening episode, a map that leads to Thrawn and Ezra's location. While this map isn't explicitly called a Zepho artifact, many fans have pointed out its similarities to Zepho designs seen in Jedi Fallen Order. The orb-like structure, the way it opens, and the ancient feel of the artifact all suggest that it could be of Zepho origin, not to mention its puzzle-like state. Peridia is a planet in the galaxy's outer regions, contains ancient structures that closely resemble Zepho temples as well. What's more, these structures have a dark, foreboding presence, hinting that something significant happened on Peridia long before Thrawn or the Night Sisters arrived. We know that Thrawn is a master strategist, always planning several steps ahead. If Thrawn chose Peridia as his base, it's possible he discovered the remnants of a Zepho civilization there, perhaps tapping into their ancient technology or knowledge to further his goals. The Night Sisters, who also appear on Peridia, seem to have taken over one of these ancient Zepho temples, repurposing it for their own dark rituals. This connection between the Night Sisters and the Zepho is critical. Both groups have a dark history with the Force, and their influence on Peridia could indicate that the Zepho's fall to the dark side wasn't a one-time event. It's possible that remnants of the Zepho's Dark Force users lingered on Peridia, perhaps influencing the Night Sisters and, by extension, Thrawn's plans. So, why are the Zepho appearing in so much Star Wars media lately? What's the larger significance of their resurgence? The Zepho represent an ancient forgotten connection to the Force, one that predates even the Jedi and the Sith. We know that. As Star Wars moves into new territory, exploring the origins of the Force, the world between worlds, and the deeper mysteries of the galaxy, the Zepho are likely to play an increasingly central role. Their deep understanding of the Force, both light and dark, positions them as key figures in the untold stories of Star Wars lore. Let's break down the reasons why their recent resurgence is so important. The Zepho may have been the first species to harness the Force, even before the Jedi and the Sith. Their use of the life wind suggests they had a unique, perhaps more nuanced relationship with the Force. They saw it as a natural element of life, something to be respected and understood rather than controlled. 
This early relationship with the forest might explain why their ruins contained both peaceful and violent elements as they wrestled with the power they had discovered. This makes them crucial in understanding the deeper cosmic significance of the Force beyond the Jedi-Sith conflict we've seen up until now. In second reason, the Zephos split between those who embrace the light side of the Force and those who fall to the dark mirrors the eventual division between the Sith and the Jedi. It suggests that the history of the Force is cyclical with different species and civilizations encountering the same temptations and dangers. If the Zepho were the first to grapple with the Force, their history could hold lessons for future Force users like Ahsoka Tano, Luke Skywalker, or even Rey, dare I say. The resurgence of Zepho artifacts and knowledge could lead to a new understanding of the Force, one that transcends the simplistic light versus dark narrative we've seen so far although Star Wars is generally about light versus dark. In the Ahsoka series, we see Peridia, a planet that houses a temple used by the Night Sisters, an ancient group of dark side wielders with a mysterious and deep connection to the Force. The fact that the temple could have been a Zepho stronghold speaks volumes about the interconnectedness of Force users in Star Wars. The Night Sisters have always been tied to dark magic, and if they co opted Zepho technology or knowledge, it could explain the strange and powerful abilities they display throughout Star Wars canon. This connection might also mean that Grand Admiral Thrawn is using Zepho relics to enhance his own power, building an even deadlier empire in the process. The Night Sisters, Thrawn, and the Zepho all coming together on Peridia could mark the beginning of a new dark era for the galaxy, or at least their knowledge and technology. We can't ignore how the Zepho are popping up in major Star Wars properties at critical points in the timeline. Their presence in Jedi Fallen Order, the Bad Batch, and Ahsoka, and even in a way Star Wars Rebels with the World Between Worlds, suggests that Lucasfilm is slowly laying the groundwork for a larger story. Now, could we see more Zepho ruins and technology uncovered in upcoming seasons of other shows? Possibly. Or perhaps they'll play a role in the larger conflict brewing in the Mandalorian and the Ahsoka series as more ancient knowledge of the Force is uncovered. Possibly, but I don't want to speculate on that. One of the most captivating aspects of the Zepho's legacy is the mysterious traps and sentinels they left behind. These automated guardians are fiercely protective of their creator's knowledge, which raises a fascinating question. Why were the Zepho so concerned about protecting their history? The Sentinels and Traps are designed not only to test those who attempt to access their secrets, but to prevent unworthy individuals from acquiring their knowledge. This implies that the Zepho understood the power of the Force and the dangers of misusing it. They encoded their knowledge in inscriptions, ancient texts, and writings found in their tombs, temples, and vaults. These writings often contain references to prophecy, balance, and the cyclical nature of the Force. Some suggest that the Zepho foresaw their own fall and perhaps the fall of other Force users in the future. This adds another layer of the mystery to their story. Did the Zepho predict the rise of the Sith, the fall of the Jedi, or even the arrival of Thrawn? These traps, puzzle-like systems that test mental and physical abilities, serve a dual purpose. They protect their most sacred knowledge from outsiders and ensure that only those truly in tune with the Force can access their secrets. These traps, like those seen in Jedi Fallen Order, challenge the protagonist's connection to the Force, making the, the Zepho an early example of Force-sensitive cultures testing individuals much like the Jedi Trials, not to mention the puzzle-like map in Ahsoka and Scara Null in the Bad Batch. The Sentinels, those hulking mechanical protectors, are designed to guard Zepho temples. They're ancient droids, basically, but what makes them even more fascinating is their connection to the Force. While they aren't Force-sensitive themselves, their construction seems to align with the Zepho's understanding of the balance between technology and the natural world. 
This philosophy of harmonizing technology with the Force offers a unique perspective on how the Zepho viewed the universe, possibly even influencing later Jedi and Sith technologies. Now let's return to the map to Thrawn in Ahsoka. As I mentioned earlier, this map bears striking similarities to Zepho relics seen in Jedi Fallen Order. But what if this isn't a coincidence? What if this map was originally a Zepho artifact leading to where the Zepho had fled? The idea that the Zepho, masters of force-sensitive architecture and puzzle making, created this map opens a wealth of possibilities. Could the Zepho have known about Peridia long before Thrawn or the Night Sisters arrived? Of course. And if so, did the Zepho flee to Peridia after their fall to the dark side, seeking refuge from their own destructive tendencies? The map could be a key to understanding the larger history of the Zepho and their migration across the galaxy, making the map not just a map to Thrawn and Ezra Bridger, but it originally a map to the Zepho. If Thrawn is using an ancient Zepho temple as its base of operations, it could mean that the Zepho's influence still lingers in the galaxy's darkest corners. The Night Sisters, with their dark side powers, may have co opted Zepho technology or temples for their own use, merging ancient Zepho knowledge with their own sinister abilities. This raises the stakes for the future of Ahsoka the Mandalorian, and the broader Star Wars universe. If Zepho technology and knowledge can be harnessed for darker purposes, what other secrets might be uncovered? Could there be more Zepho temples, more maps, and more hidden power waiting to be found? Of course there are. And most importantly, who will control this knowledge? The light side? The dark? Or will it go again unfor unremembered? As we've explored today, the Zepho are becoming more relevant in the Star Wars universe than ever before. From Jedi Fallen Order to the Bad Batch, Ahsoka, and the world between worlds in the Rebels series. The Zepho's presence is growing, and with good reason. Their connection to the Force, their tragic fall, and their technological marvels make them one of the most mysterious and compelling ancient civilizations in Star Wars. But the most intriguing question remains, why now? Why are we seeing the Zepho appear in so many Star Wars stories lately? The answer might lie in the future of Star Wars storytelling, with new shows, video games, and films exploring the origins of the Force. The Zepho story could hold the key to understanding the balance between light and dark, the nature of the Force itself, the beginning of the Jedi, and the fate of the galaxy after. Their legacy isn't just ancient history, it could be the future of Star Wars. Thanks for watching Star Wars Fanatics. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into the mysteries of the Zepho, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment with your thoughts on where the Zepho might show up next. Until the next time, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and may the Force be with you always.